Uh, Dean Kim is uh, head of uh, global research product at William O'Neill and Company. Dean, great to have you with us here on the program. Thank you. Now, the bank's index, the bank Nifty, Dean, uh, was all the rage yesterday and single-handedly really led the market higher. So let's just start with banks. Uh, you know, I was looking at sort of uh, targets here on the Nifty Bank and I, uh, I, I, and I thought the bank's index could get to about 54, 300 plus. I mean, in the immediate uh, sort of uh, leg. Do you think that's possible? And uh, how would you trade the Nifty Bank? Which is the strongest stocks there? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on uh, HCFC Bank very closely at the moment. Um, it's close to being, you know, breaking out uh, from a stage one base. Uh, the pivot is 1721 Indian rupees. So should we, uh, you know, breach that uh, pivot point with high volume? Uh, I would say that that would be a great indicator uh, that uh, Nifty Banks uh, will continue to work. Uh, so pretty exciting. Um, so finally, we're seeing some, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, buying into into Indian banks. Uh, of course, you've got uh, Federal Bank that's doing well. State Bank of India continues to do well, as well as ICICI. Uh, but you know, the flagship uh, HDFC Bank uh, that's the key one that the, we're keeping an eye on. You know, across at least the larger banks, are you seeing? Have you looked at charts? Is this giving you an indication of a fresh leg higher? Of course, HCFC Bank, uh, you think there is enough steam, and that's the largest weight. Uh, but what about the others, Access, ICICI, uh, Indusin, and the others? Yeah, uh, so, you know, a lot of the banks are in uh, consolidating well within the base. Um, and so we would not be aggressive until we see a breakout. Uh, so, as I said, HCFC is about to break out. Uh, so that's very, very exciting. Um, others, ICICI is getting, you know, slightly extended, and so I wouldn't chase here. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, Federal Bank, uh, State Bank of India, and then, you know, keep a close eye on uh, ICICI. Um, I, I'm sorry, Indusin Bank. Indusin Bank as well as uh, Bank uh, Maharashtra. Uh, they're all consolidating in the base, and we just need a few more sessions of uh, updates uh, before we can, you know, gain more confidence that the breakouts are going to work. So okay. we're, we're, I think we're in, heading in the right direction. We're heading in the right direction for sure. I mean, the Nifty Bank, who would have thought, right? Everyone was waiting for the 50,000 milestone. And lo and behold, we're now at 52,000 on the Nifty Bank. But uh, Dean, uh, so you said you're watching HDFC Bank very closely. Uh, another bank that has been doing well is Kotak Mahindra Bank. I wanted your thoughts there. From the June lows, the stock is up about 9-10%. Do you think it could play catch up to the other banks? And how is the chart looking? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's consolidating well above uh, moving averages. Um, still has a little bit of work to do. Um, I believe uh, they're, they've overtaken the 100-day moving average. So uh, once uh, we see some, you know, positive reaction uh, amongst other larger banks, uh, Coltec, Mahindra should follow suit. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an indication that, uh, especially foreign investors, they believe in, uh, you know, the Indian economy, is going to continue to uh, be strong, uh, particularly on the back of uh, China. China is getting much weaker now. Uh, in fact, we've um, uh, put the market status uh, to a downtrend just today. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of uh, money, global money, is going to flow towards India, and in particular, uh, some of the, you know, the sectors that haven't really performed well uh, today, uh, low valuation. And, you know, those are large cap banks. Mm. On HDFC Bank, getting back to it, you said 1720 is the level that you're watching out for when it completes, I think, some base one sort of a correction or consolidation. What happens after that? Once 1720 has been breached on the upside? Um, yeah, so uh, we look at volume very closely as well. So if, uh, if the stock can, like, you know, punch through that 1721 level uh, with high volume, uh, that would be a great indicator that the breakout is going to work. Um, and we've seen other, you know, bank like uh, Punjab National Bank, uh, some of the some of the state-owned banks uh, performed very well recently. And uh, you know, we would be expecting that kind of uh, performance out of the uh, private sector banks. Okay, that's on the private sector banks. Got it. The other space that has you know just not participated in the rally much is IT. But of course, there is. Potential for leadership there. 
Uh, how are they looking on the charts? Do you see any kind of catch-up over the next couple of months from the IT space? And if yes, what would the stocks be to watch? Yeah, I mean, if we look at some of the larger cap, um, obviously, Tata Consultancy, Infosys, um, they still have a lot of work to do. You know, they're kind of uh, testing the 200-day moving average. Uh, that's, you know, following suit with other you know, global IT providers, such as Cognizant in the U.S., charts look similar. Uh, but uh, if you look at some of the smaller cap names, you know, uh, CE Info Systems, um, that that looks great, um, breaking out from the base. Uh, uh, Imudra, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, that one looks good, as well as uh, Tech Mahindra. Um, I, and I think these are the three smaller cap names um, that are opportunities uh, at the moment. Yeah, no, got that. Uh, fair enough. That's IT services. Any any other uh, sort of names, uh, Dean? Where so much, right? I mean, uh, in terms of a broader market, single stock action, humongous in many cases. Yeah, there. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the the breadth of the market is fairly wide. Um, so you've got you know traditional uh, sectors like basic material, cap equipment, continue to do well uh, within cap equipment, particularly you know sort of agricultural related. Uh, Kemplas, uh, Sanmar, um, you know, Bayer, Prop Science, uh, those types of names are doing well. Uh, Ratmani Metals and Tubes, uh, Ram Krishna Forging, uh, these are some of the names in basic material. And then Cap Equipment, KEC International, GMR, Airport Infrastructure, uh, Proj Industries. Uh, these are names that are, you know, we're noticing breaking out at the moment. Uh, so these are great opportunities. And then, you know, consumer cyclicals, uh, there are some names popping up that, um, you know, we haven't seen, uh, you know, sort of perform before. Uh, so you, you've got uh, sort of auto parts makers, uh, Signature Global, Sundra and Fasteners. And then, um, you, you know, you've got the other uh, traditional cyclical names like Indian hotels uh, that are breaking out. So. Uh, lot, lots to choose from, and the breadth is pretty wide. Uh, Dean, uh, getting back to the global construct, you said you recently changed the status on China to a downtrend. What are the other big changes? Uh, what's happening on the global front? Yeah, um, in emerging markets, uh, India, Taiwan, Korea continues their uptrend, um, while uh, you know some of the larger markets like uh, Australia, uh, Japan. Uh, still an uptrend, but sort of under pressure, um, and so needs uh, needs some consolidation there. Uh, but I would say the best performing markets at the moment that people should focus on is India, Taiwan, and Korea. Uh, obviously, Taiwan and Korea largely driven by the tech sector. Uh, they tend to be suppliers to global uh, sort of semiconductor and AI themes. Um, and then uh, India is it's uh, you know uh, sort of. Uh, the growth of the economies that's supporting uh, the, the performance in, in the market. So, um, but China is a concern. China um, has been moved to downtrend, and uh, they're they're just not doing enough in terms of stimulus. And so we we're seeing the the market uh, trading, you know, uh, you know, sort of um, the other way as opposed to India, Taiwan, and Korea. Mm. Uh, Dean, just uh, one last uh, question. Uh, if you looked at the Nifty CPAC index or the PAC index, right? Uh, I mean, it's been up, uh, same levels where they were pre-election. Uh, and uh, is it, is there a case there? If you, I don't know which one you looked at or if you have looked at it at all. But if you have uh, a case for uh, some more consolidation, uh, sideways action, even maybe. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't looked at those very closely, um, but I think uh, it all depends on, you know, let's say the the new government, uh, what types of policies that they're going to come out with, and so far it seems like the you know uh, domestic markets as well as uh, you know international investors are believing in the uh, the incumbent government and uh, thinks that uh, they can get things done. Uh, so that's good news. I mean, otherwise, you know, banks will not be performing as it, as it has been. Uh, so um, I think it will take time, but uh, glad to see the breadth is widening.
No, absolutely. I mean, uh, great conversation. By the way, uh, one of the reasons why banks did, I mean, it's obviously conjecture, is that uh, starting this Friday, uh, India government bonds are going to be mm. part of the JP Morgan yes. bond index. Mm. Now, there is no direct impact. I mean, the, the indirect longer term, medium term impact is that it perhaps pushes down the cost of capital, interest rates, right? Mm. So one sector which gets, uh, which gets the benefit is uh, financials. I mean, I think, you know, so people were scratching their heads wondering why are banks suddenly out of the blue. Yesterday, last week they did 3.5%, Monday they took a break and they were back yesterday. Uh, so, you know, markets like to latch on to uh, reasons uh, and, uh, you know, this is just one of them, which is a, it's a big one, I mean, for the bond market. And we'll, of course, leading into it this Friday, uh, explain uh, what this means uh, with our colleague Lata. So, uh, that's uh, that. Dean, great, great conversation as always. Thank you very much uh, for your time here.